Well, I'm out at the ball field, and it's a great day. And the only thing that could ruin a great day on the diamond is elbow pain. Hi, I'm Dr. Randy Goldstein. Today, we're going to talk about Little League Elbow. Little League Elbow is an injury at the growth plate at the inside of the elbow. And it's common. In fact, elbow pain in baseball is super common. About 30% in grade school, 45% middle school, and 50% in high school and college. Some people think that you should have a surgery even before you're injured to possibly prevent elbow pain and injury. Let's learn a little bit more about Little League Elbow first. Before we talk about what's wrong with Little League Elbow, let's talk about what's right in the developing elbow of a young athlete. The elbow is a tricky spot to evaluate because growth plates come in at different times during the athlete's life. And these ossification centers or growth plates may trick a doctor that's not knowledgeable or not used to seeing a lot of young elbows and thinking that's the problem when really everyone at that age has that appearance. Let's take a look. At a year old, this growth plate starts and then continues to grow through the development of the elbow. At four years old, this growth plate starts. And at five years old, this growth plate starts. In fact, at eight years and 10 years old, these growth plates will develop. And thus, this x-ray is someone who's probably a seven or eight year old, just by the appearance of the x-ray. This x-ray is a skeletally mature athlete. The growth plates are gone. And this is what the elbow looks like as an adult. It can be tricky. So rather than getting anxious if one doctor says one thing and one doctor says something else, make sure you're getting your recommendations from sports medicine doctors that have knowledge in the young developing athlete. Now we understand the elbow develops at a steady state depending upon your age. So depending upon the age of the athlete helps determine the number of pitches that are safe. The older you get, the more throws are likely to be safe. And they used to talk a lot about what kind of ball can be thrown depending upon your age, a breaking ball or a curve ball, how hard you can throw the ball. Studies have been done. And while some say curve balls are more dangerous, the truth is all of these can cause little league elbow or elbow injuries if too many throws or too hard of throws are done at too early of an age. Take their technique or the kinds of pitches they're throwing, the amount of times they're throwing and the amount of days they're allowed to rest after a day of throwing, and you can get a pretty good idea of the risk for a young pitcher getting little league elbow. Now, any position get, can get little league elbow, including the catcher or an outfieldsman, but if you take the young thrower who's throwing with a lot of valgus or stress on the inside of the elbow and perhaps isn't having the most perfect technique with maybe their wrist position or how open their shoulder is or how their chest is showing during their pitch, perhaps how their internal or external rotation of their hips, putting all this together along with frequent throwing and along with hard pitches can take a promising pitcher who at eight or nine years old is excited to become that high school or college pitcher and end the season early because of an injury or at worst end of career. And so getting too enthusiastic about the great thrower and ruining him for the rest of his career seems unfair. Take a young thrower, let them learn the proper technique with the moderate amount of pitches and the moderate amount of velocity and keep them for a lifetime of baseball. If they do have pain, they often point to the inside of their elbow. That's where a growth plate is trying to develop. And a lot of this valgus throwing can cause inflammation, irritation, or even separation or a fracture of this relatively weak growth plate compared to the rest of the structures in the elbow. We got to protect this area. The exam includes pointing to where the area hurts and then having the healthcare provider push around that area to see if it's swollen or red or warm, tender to palpation. We measure with a tool called a goiniometer on how much the athlete can straighten and bend, how much the elbow can twist 
and where the arm sits in a normal position. Is it always sitting in valgus or that stressed position or only when they throw? And then doing an exam and stressing the inside of their elbow with a little bit of force to see if it gives up or if it causes pain. Here's where the pain would be with that growth plate injury. The red sunburst at the inside of the elbow is also where that growth plate is trying to develop. Now, while baseball is the sport that we are classically talking about, little league elbow, this can occur in other sports that depend upon the upper extremity, such as other throwing sports like javelin and discus, and weight-bearing sports such as gymnastics, cheerleading, and some of the martial arts that depend upon the upper extremity. Wrestling is another sport that is at risk for this young developing growth plate, which is relatively weak to give up or become irritated, causing pain. After the exam, usually you'll get x-rays. It's an important part of the evaluation, but also if we need x-rays in the future, we can compare what it looks like today to what it looks like down the road. Here's a normal looking growth plate. It's thin and crisp, symmetric all the way across, compared to this one that is wider, less crisp than this one, and a little wider on this side, and a little thinner on this side, a bit asymmetric. This is likely where the athlete's pain is as well. This is little league elbow. Every baseball player that has elbow pain doesn't have little league elbow. There's a list of things that it could be. And while little league elbow is very common, you can't overlook the possibility that it could be coming from something else. X-rays can help this along with a good exam by a sports medicine healthcare provider that's comfortable with this age group. I wanted to show you a couple of things that were rather subtle. Here's the normal x-ray. In this one, if you look under the red mark, there is a triangular piece of bone or an avulsion where either the ulnar collateral ligament or one of the flexor wrist muscle tendons pulled off a piece of the growth plate. This is called an avulsion. And in this x-ray, while there's nothing obvious bony, you can tell that there's a slight darkening here and a slight darkening here that suggests there's an effusion or swelling in the elbow, and something further needs to be diagnosed before the athlete can return to play. I keep talking about the growth plate as being the weakest link or what's most likely to get injured. And while you have growth plates, that's true. It's unusual for the ulnar collateral ligament to get injured in a developing athlete. But once the growth plates are closed or you're skeletally mature, then the ulnar collateral ligament becomes the weak link or the most likely thing to get injured in an athlete with a lot of valgus technique and repetition. Here's the ulnar collateral ligament intact, the black rubber band-like structure, and here it is torn. No connection from the top to the bottom and a lot of edema or swelling or effusion. When the ulnar collateral ligament isn't in, attached anymore, two things can be done. In a non-throwing athlete, often, Rest, letting it scar down, physical therapy, and returning to a normal life is acceptable. But for the throwing athlete, or the athlete that has a lot of weight bearing on their arm, such as a gymnast, the ulnar collateral ligament needs to be reconstructed. This is what is termed the Tommy John surgery. Well, before we talk about the necessity for surgery or a reconstruction, what if we could prevent this injury? Maybe even prevent little league elbow, which when treated, requires no throwing for somewhere between one and four months, depending upon the athlete's pain, the exam, the x-ray. Maybe looking at the athlete's whole body is an important piece of prevention. Indeed, this is called the kinetic chain, just like the kid's song, the hip bones connected to the knee bone. In a pitch, the force comes from the ground through your ankle, knees, hips, back, Finally, your shoulders, elbow, wrist, the ball is released. If one of those structures isn't doing their job correctly, another may get more stress resulting in an injury. And that is the importance of looking at the kinetic chain. Here's an athlete who pitches. Look at the shoulder heights, the right being lower than the left. Look at the musculature, the right seemingly more developed than the left. Look at the position of the scapulas, also different. And finally, the elbows. We can't see the hips in this picture, but the importance of every structure being symmetric and working correctly 
is a piece of prevention, and that's called the kinetic chain. Once the kinetic chain has been evaluated, the next step is to look at the phases of throwing. Whether in a prevention program or a rehab program after an injury, a knowledgeable pitching coach, occupational or physical therapist, athletic trainer or sports doctor can help the athlete get back to pitching. With varying distances, types of throws, velocities, and whether you're on the mound or on the ground, can help the athlete with a graduated program to help prevent a new injury. Each phase is looked at to make sure that each body part is doing its job and that there's not one area that's going to get more stress or risk of another injury. Well, before I end, I just want to at least mention that Little League shoulder is the same kind of thing as Little League elbow. One we call an apophysitis in the elbow and we call a epiphysialysis in the shoulder, but essentially they're the same. This is the growth plate that looks normal in the developing shoulder. And someone who throws a lot can get little league shoulder, which is a widening or an asymmetry of that growth plate. Notice it's wider here and less symmetric than this one, which is more similar all the way across. They'll point to the deltoid muscle area. And in fact, often coaches or parents will think it's a deltoid muscle strain, but it's not. It's a growth plate injury, similar to little league elbow, called the little league shoulder, in the area of the deltoid muscle, but it's where that growth plate lives. And if you're a young thrower with shoulder pain, without a fall or an injury, this growth plate should be evaluated by a sports medicine healthcare provider that is knowledgeable in young developing athletes and knows how to look for little league shoulder. Rather than waiting until the pitcher can't throw anymore or is in so much pain that the velocity or accuracy has gone out the window, better to get a diagnosis and a treatment started, perhaps saving a season, more importantly, saving a career. I'm Dr. Andy Goldstein. Be well.